I never touched the piano ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, has the piano ever touched you? No. <laughs> <laughs> never. I was staying very far away from those types of instruments. <laughs> if, you have if I start playing now, it will be like. Um, okay, so before Anna comes back up, uh, I wanted to process a little bit because I thought what she shared with us was very, very important. Um, and it is the word of the Lord to our school, or DBS, not just this DBS, but DBS in general, that the word of the Lord to you was community. How do we learn community? And to be really honest, um, you know, when I've traveled to other bases, most of the bases are smaller than here, this one, right? So I don't know how many of you have been to other bases and, and stayed there for extended time. But as we've been to some of the bases, because it's smaller, that sense of community is perhaps a little bit more achievable. Right? But we are here in a big place, you know, we, our community, uh, Wabakuna community is huge. And so uh, oftentimes the biggest problem, I've been here 13 years, and the resounding um, complaints, concerns of our staff is the sense of loneliness. Mm -hmm. and that's always been part of our struggle on this base. And so I think there is, um, a, let's say, an atmosphere that we need to break through, mm -hmm. you know, um, that exists on this community in regards to community. And for you know, even people um, like guys who have been here longer, and I don't know how many years all of you guys have been here, but um, you get so familiar. I get so familiar with, okay, I'm in the groove and this is how this place works, and so you just end up being or doing things without really realizing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so I just, yeah, as um, Anna was sharing, it was just like, oh yes, I want this. And I, you know, it was the word of the Lord for DBS, but I think, I mean, it is the word of the Lord, and it is the value to YWAM as well. And perhaps we won't achieve that ideal community uh, you know, and, and I'm sure each one of us has an idea of what that community can look like. And, and maybe we won't be able to, uh, most likely we won't be achieved to all of those ideals, but that this is a really great opportunity that we get to really step out into what a community can look like, right? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of have us process a little bit about what was something new that you heard or maybe something that really convicted you uh, oh yeah not because we're doing something wrong not in the conviction of like I did it wrong so not convicted but like yeah like I really really want to embrace this and this is I think how I can contribute you know what does that mean to be a part of a family um, so I want us to kind of process a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I want to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, how, because I'm so new, I feel like I'm new at this too, coming into this like concept of community. Even though we talk about it, we talk about it all the time. Um, <coughs> in some ways it feels very unfamiliar to me. Um, so I want to learn together with, with this group. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with you guys, I want to learn it together with our our students, and I'm sure we're going to stumble, we're going to make mistakes, but that's okay because we're here to champion one another and go, oh, I'm not sure if that was the right way to, you know, I think that was a better way to bring up a community than to make up one, you know, and just being able to be loving and communicating that. So, yeah, so is it okay if we take some time to sh just share what, you, what you're thinking, um, how this applies to us? how this applies to you, how we can contribute together in creating that community. So I just want to give the floor to you guys. Yeah? 
What was something new? What was something that was convicting? What was something that you felt like, oh, I want to try this out, you know, that I think I could contribute to this community? I thought it was interesting um, for me to see um, when Melinda was talk using the coffee example. <laughs> and for me, this, I don't know, our DTS, we highly encourage students to grab coffee during lecture because it's hot, everybody's tired, so we would rather want students to initiate like being alert and you know, being engaged by going behind back of the classroom, walk, you know, or go to the bathroom, like wash yourself or grab a coffee. For that was us like honoring the speaker. But then you know, we had the same value, but then the way we expressed was mm. different. And then I realized, wow, like someone from a different base or a different school can see that as totally different. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, okay, then how, how do I you know, work it out? Right. Same value, but then yeah. I'm used to what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. So that's me honoring, and then I realized, well, that was dishonoring. Mm -hmm. some people, yeah. Some people. yeah, that's right. So how could we do that? I mean, how, how would we adapt to that? Yeah. Right, because I totally see your point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, because you want to honor the speaker by making sure that the students are engaged, mm -hmm. and for it, in order for them to be engaged, they need a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas other people might say, "Hey, you know, really to honor a speaker is to be able to give them full attention, yeah. and True. it is their time, and they're on the stage, so we should really honor them." So, how well, how do you guys? What do you guys think mm -hmm. about that? I feel like I'm torn between the two mm -hmm. because there's something in me that thinks for a class, you uh, maybe it's because I I haven't just left school, mm -hmm. but there's something in me that's like you just sit down for the class and maybe you leave to go to the bathroom, but that's it. Mm -hmm. But then there's the other part of me that is very. I need to move like the kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. If I'm fully engaged with the teacher, if I'm typing, if I'm doodling, mm -hmm. if I'm, and sometimes I'm just actually getting up and going and getting a cup of coffee mm -hmm. can be part of my kinesthetic engaging. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm answering. I don't know yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. That's so good. It's, I, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, I, I it guess is. you just come to an agreement mm -hmm. as a school which one you're going to take for this school. Right. Mm -hmm. For um, sorry. Go ahead. For my school last year, <clears throat> we said before start, mm -hmm. grab coffee. If you need anything before class, grab. Mm -hmm. But then we gave them freedom to go get coffee during um, lectures. But then I uh, found out that only few people who do that every time. Mm -hmm. So besides them, everyone was there with their coffee and all the stuff, and then mm -hmm. stayed there. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can do that, like we couldn't just say, no, you can't move. But then at the same time, like, hey, guys, you guys can grab coffee first. Mm -hmm. And they can sit down. It's not two hours, three hours, like mm -hmm. one, one hour or mm -hmm. one and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So we can stay like that. But then, like she said, some people can't stay. Mm -hmm. Then they can just go around. I, I feel like I fall asleep. No, I don't want to do that. Then maybe it's better for them mm -hmm. to stay, stand up, and then mm -hmm. they walk around. Yeah. So I think, yeah, yeah. that would be better. But then don't forget to give some freedom for people. Yeah, space. Uh, I think if we're just con like telling them before, and then also if we're just consistent with our break times or something. Mm -hmm. Like I think actually <coughs> even for me, like one break is not enough mm -hmm. like I need like three sections or something but mm -hmm. that's just me and so if we were like telling the speaker like this is when the breaks are during mm -hmm. the class and the students know mm -hmm. I'll have a break in like 20 minutes mm -hmm. I'm okay for 20 minutes yeah. or something yeah like these are our break times we're going to stick to these break times or something I think what I'm hearing is in a common thread, if, then please let me know if I'm misunderstanding. But it's it's the set of expectations. Yeah. You know what are, what are we expecting? So if we communicate with our students, you know we're doing this for you as well as for our our speaker, um, and this is how we want to work. 
you know, and, and being mindful of, of that is, again, just, you know, because oftentimes we do want to come to a rule. We want to come to a something, some kind of decision that works, you know, and then just set a boundary and just follow that, which is fine, but I think for me, like, I, when I deal with my kids, I always like to explain why the first, not the what. <coughs> You know, and so it, communicating with our students, hey, we know that this is going to be a lot of information. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, first few weeks, you're going to be like, oh, information overload, like, how do I process all this? And, you know, and you may feel like you, you want to check out, so forth. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So by giving you these breaks, but then that's, you know, so I don't know. So I'm not, get, I'm not setting. A specific rule at this point, but I think that's what mm. we need to. I think is best mm -hmm. yeah. to communicate the values with our students instead of just rules. Mm -hmm. Right. And my example was with the boundary in place that there would be breaks, mm -hmm. and therefore the example for me when I'm listening to you, the example for me was it's about me right now, not about the guest speaker. It's about what I want, and so it's the, mo the heart motive behind what's happening with that, right? So, so there may be a boundary in place, and then uh, I honor that boundary, or I break that boundary depending on my heart, heart motive, right? And so the, the example of going to get coffee was what the, the boundary there was, was there, and my heart motive is, is I'm the exception to that boundary. Whatever that boundary is, I'm the exception. I don't have to follow that boundary. And who cares about boundaries anyway? Right? Like, and so, like grace. <laughs> yeah, I'm the grace. Grace of Jesus. I'm act first and repent later. <laughs> right? But so, so the example is not like, if that was communicated, then that would totally be okay because that was what was communicated, right? My example was out of... Um, breaking a boundary because I'm an exception, because my heart motive. And I think that sometimes, um, from, from my experience, is that people have never had to be disciplined. And they don't know how to discipline themselves. And so, and then they don't have to discipline themselves. Because we don't set any boundaries for people to discipline themselves. And we don't require much of someone. We, we, and and so, uh, so a boundary is the minimum of what we're requiring someone to do. But, but if you're always the exception, then, then how are you actually learning discipline? How yeah. are you actually learning submission mm -hmm. to authority? How are you actually learning submission to one another? How are you actually honoring? How are you actually demonstrating you know, those kinds of things? So no matter how the value is expressed, it can be expressed like, like Leah said with the this is the expectation, so then people can come in and out. Yeah, you know? I think on that subject, like, I definitely agree with what Carrie and Ellie said, that you, I'm just thinking back to my RDBS, like, um, say something like, okay, like, coffee's in here at 8.50, class starts at 9, be strict on what needs to be strict on, like, class is starting at 9, so get in here at 8.50, get your cup of coffee and be seated, and then, like Ellie said, also have, like, break times. But if you have uh, something in place that sounds really legalistic, like you cannot move for three hours, then students that want to be moving, they're only thinking about the fact that they can't move, mm -hmm. and then they're not paying attention the yeah, entire time. Yeah, yeah. So you have to give the grace to be like, but like Carrie said again, there was that grace in our school, everyone can get up whenever. But at day-to-day -day basis, it was only like two or three students who religiously like needed to move around. Mm -hmm. Most, 90% of our class was very engaged got their coffee in the mm -hmm. morning, and then we had that break, and it was fine. So give the, give the freedom because, I mean, yeah, only like three students chose to utilize that freedom. As you, you might think that like a lot of kids like, need to move around, but they don't. Mm -hmm. Like most kids will choose to stay engaged, especially if they have their whatever coffee in the morning, you know? Mm -hmm. So have, have rules, but definitely don't be legalistic about it. Have like the right rules, I would say. Mm -hmm. 
because if you do have a rule that's like you can't move for three hours, it's disrespecting the speaker, there will be students who completely check out because they're angry about mm -hmm. that rule, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're <coughs> talking, but, you know, so I want to take us back to the values. Like, so, you know, when we have these, mm -hmm. these rules, and I'm sure we're going to have thousands of these things, right? Um, you know, that, what is it that we're saying? Because I see the value in your role. Of we want to value, we are valuing this, the speaker by making sure that the students are engaged. And then I see the value of, yes, let's um, honor this, the, the speaker by giving them attention. Right? So these are two different values, but that um, I think, again, it's the communication. For me, the way I see it is it's the communication that needs to be made clear of these values. Um, that makes things, well, whether we do it this way or whether we do it that way, whether we have five breaks in between, you know, but it's, we, we create from our value. Yeah. And you can also talk to the speaker and ask him, like, what makes you feel appreciated? Like, is it okay if people are on their laptops and drinking coffee? Does that make you, I know if I'm speaking, I want to see people on their laptops with coffee because I know that food and something tangible in front of you really like breaks down barriers in terms of like kids will be more open when they're like have something instead of just like strictly sitting there with a pen and paper like feeling like they're back in grade school. Sure. I'm not as open when it's that. I'm more adapt to be open when the environment is more welcoming and like family and there's like it's just very hospitable. Like if I have coffee and a computer I'll be more open to share. So mm -hmm. I would like if I was a speaker to see everyone have that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure all speakers want that. Right. So to communicate with the speaker what maybe what do they like. Mm -hmm. Anything else that struck to you about community? How do we walk out our values in our community? On the, oh, <coughs> <I'm going first. coughs> so for me, it was when Anna was sharing how she's just naturally like monotone and quiet and straight face. And that's something that I really struggled with, um, like past quarters, as I've been like up translating more people, I've been listening more, and so I would have to like deliberately like smile at everyone. Um, but I realized that in my heart was because I didn't want people to like misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. But now I'm realizing that it's like a uh, place of leadership that people like, look up to you, that you like choose to like. Um, give off that, you know, like you want to glorify God through your countenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, for me, because she mentioned about exception, so staff doesn't mean we have a, like all exceptions. So mm -hmm. like a class session, it's back to the class session, like uh, when staff are like sitting or like in their positions mm -hmm. and then really fully pay attention like students see that see mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and then they learn that yeah. so i think it's really important to do first mm -hmm. and then we teach yeah. so yeah that's a really important value yeah. so it's even like it like the dts when i stepped my school leaders were on front line mm -hmm. and the older staff like it like it together and then if they have some stuff to be done then they would they said like it back mm -hmm. and then they can go out mm -hmm. without any interruption. Yeah, yeah. So then mm -hmm. like literally it reduced like a lot of students just wandering around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it, their staff were there mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. So I think it's really important to show them like when we say mm -hmm. we give like why and then showing that we do that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and then they can follow us. Mm -hmm. That's good. <coughs> We have to lead by our examples. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't expect our students to participate or participate in corporate prayers or participate in asking questions and you know come to small groups and all these things. I think if we don't do them ourselves, mm -hmm. you know that we need to model for them. And and I love the way um, Anna and, and Melinda intentionally calls all of us leaders. You know, because it is easy for us to think, oh, so and so are leaders, we're just small group facilitators. But no, we're all leaders. And I know that 
among us are people who have lots of experience in leading. You know, and so um, we're all leaders, and that means all of the students are going to be looking at us to lead them. And for, you know, they're going to copy us. Like one of the things, I don't need to go into teaching, but I mean, just a few minutes, but um, when my kids used to fight, I don't know, your kid is too young to fight with anyone, yeah? Okay, so when you have well, multiple children, <laughs> you have multiple children in your family and they start fighting with each other, you will start to cringe because they will use the tone of voice and they'll use the language that you use to your own kids or to your husband. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's what I look like. That's what I sound like. <laughs> and they don't just pick those things up. They don't have to be taught. They just pick those things up. And, and so we want our students to pick up some good stuff from us. Yeah? And so we need to be very intentional. Um, Anybody have like burning, because we're very short in time, I want to honor you guys with your time. Any burning revelation of how can we, how can I, or what was the conviction, or how can I, you know, con contribute to making a community? Or becoming part of this community? Maybe I put too big of an emphasis in the adjective there. <laughs> For me, as I was listening to Anna talk about it again, I was thinking about how can I actually, uh, actually consider for like, for example, tomorrow, how can I consider today how to contribute to community tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Or because I don't know if after I leave this room, if I, if I ever actually think about it, unless I'm preparing something, mm -hmm. right? So, so, I actually need to be more deliberate. What I'm realizing is I need to be more deliberate in considering how to do that. And I also need to be more aware and observant of what is taking place around me so that I can actually participate in that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Instead of just like, I, I don't see, I can't, I, then, then I can't do, I'm not actually thinking mm -hmm. that way. So I really need to actually deliberately shift my thinking because mm -hmm. I, uh, maybe naturally some ways I do, but then sometimes I, I don't. And so I need to figure out how can I actually consider it more deliberately and how can I mm -hmm. be more aware yeah. of how I'm actually already, am I contributing to community? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not deliberately thinking about it, right. so therefore the answer would be no. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. That's so true. It's, it's intentional. <coughs> I think as we, as we go into this, um, community aspect of who we are and as we're learning it all together it's going to take intentional deliberate thoughts and actions on our part all of us I think um, yeah you know biggest thing for me is um, I have to make a big confession <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a functional extrovert so I will function, I, I could be an extrovert, but I'm really an introvert by nature. And large spaces with large amounts of people tire me out very quickly. Mm -hmm. So when that cafeteria got built, I never ate there. <laughs> I always brought my lunch because I cannot digest my food properly eating with like so many people around me. It just, I just, it just, it's too much. And so I would just bring my lunch, just sit and eat. You know, I don't like to eat by myself, but I can't eat with thousand thousand other people. It just is hard. Similarly, you know, I was um, running the learning center, and I'm with kids and people all day long. So by three o'clock comes around or three thirty, and I have to go to staff meeting and sit in an Ohana court with five five hundred other people. It's just just sensory overload for me. Right? So oftentimes, I use that excuse to not go to a staff meeting and say, honey, you could tell me what happened at the staff meeting. <gasps> I know, that's a, I'm telling you, it's the biggest confession I have. <laughs> okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> Audience recorded. <laughs> it's going on YouTube. Lord, oh! Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> and so, 
I want to be better. I need to be intentional. I need to, you know, on those days where I need to be participating in a bigger things, um, then I need to be intentional in how I run that day so that I could reserve myself to do the latter part. Um, so, you know, that's how one thing that I want to be intentional in. Um, and, and so as you guys go to lunch, I want you guys to think about, you know, what are some things? How, have I removed myself from a community? Or am I just community oriented just because it's necessary for that season and I'm not, you know? Like just, if you can evaluate and think on this as you go to lunch and talk to one another. You know, how, you know what does this mean? What does that look like? How, you know, in, the, in this class, in our staff, in our big, you know, Kona campus, let's be really, really mindful and intentional. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, with that, the communication piece, two minutes over, um, communication piece that I want to give to you because we want to honor communication. Okay, we, I highly value communication and I was writing an email to Angie last night going, you will come to know me that I process a lot through emails. So my emails are like kind of long. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, communication is super important to me. Um, and I want to communicate to you guys that um, for me this afternoon, actually from lunch, I have to go, my son's going to come and pick me up and then I have to go to parent-teacher meeting at one o'clock because my husband is out of town. And so I have to go. And so I will be missing probably the first hour of our afternoon session. So I just wanted to communicate that with you guys so you don't sit there and go, oh. Where's Chris? You know, she must be doing something, you know? And so I just wanted to communicate that with you guys. Um, and with that, we will communicate a little bit more as to how, um, what kind of role Angie and I have for the school, how Andrew fits into all this picture and so forth. We're still developing that and, and we're still trying to understand, you know, because Andrew really communicated that piece of e email because he realized, oh, it's, more than what he could do in terms of his capacity. And so he, you know, he was trying to kind of come to another place where he can he doesn't have to have carry so much. And so we're trying to figure out what that looks like for him as well. Um, so we'll communicate all of that to you guys soon. But just for today, I would like to just ask um, that if you guys are, any kind of communication, personal communication that you need to make, um, you've been doing it with Andrew that you would direct that to me so that if you're late if you got to jump out for something you got to you know something is happening in your life or whatever then you know you, if you bring it then I'll share it with the people that need to learn or know those things is that okay so I'll give you my phone number and Kaka. Oh, oh, I, I don't know my ID. How do I find my uh, ID? You got it from the computer. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, that's, and, and it's Chris with a K. And um, if you don't have my, it's just Chris dot one at u 